as you can tell, I'm in SCU in this program, and I and happen to be right now in a procedure called Insert Create Cunt. And for some reason, this procedure is not working properly, and I'm trying to debug it right now and figure out why the code is not working as I expect it to. So I'm in SCU, as you can see, and I'm going to page down. I know it has to do some, something to do with this if statement over here because I know A did equal 1 at one point when I ran it, but it wasn't obvious what else was happening. So as I go through this, I'm trying to really decipher. You can imagine that between all these if statements, if this were a real production program, I could have hundreds or maybe even thousands of lines between each of these nested ifs. And this can become very ugly very quickly. So what I really want to do is find out where the blocks are. And these are called control blocks. And I want to find out how this control block is nested over here. Because that will really help me see how the logic of this program flows. So what I really want to do is come over here, for example, to this h, if h equals 8, and see where that one ends. Where is the corresponding end if for this statement over here? So how do I do that in SCU? Well, I can just start paging and go down and start with this if over here and just count backwards, go one by one, and eventually I'll come to it. But that's really a crazy way to do this, especially when you have hundreds or thousands of lines. Let me show you a much easier way how to do this in RDI because that's what you really want to do. Here's that same program in RDI. You can see I'm in that same procedure right here, declare proc, insert, create, cunt. Obviously, immediately you can see the difference from SCU. SCU just gives me in green and black, and here it's colorized, so it's much easier to read the code with the different colors, or as they call it in RDI parlance, tokenized. I'm going to now scroll down to that nested if statement again. There it is. And again, the challenge I had was I'm trying to find the corresponding end if for this line over here, for this control block over here, if h equals 8. Well, again, if I was an SCU, I would have to simply go to the last end if statement and just start counting back like that, which is a real challenge if I have hundreds or maybe even thousands of lines between each of those if statements. In RDI, it's quite simple. I simply position on the if statement like that, right-click, go to source like that, and you notice that I have a, an option there which says show block nesting, which I'm going to do right now. Show block nesting. Click on that. And right now you can see that I have these arrows over here. It's showing me the top arrow is pointing to the line that I positioned on. And that's pointing to this end if over here. So now it's very obvious to me where that uh, the corresponding end if or the end of that block is. You'll also notice in these arrows over here that I have a couple of nested if statements, and sure enough, there they are. And you can see that that's indicated by the different arrows, just like that. If I want to get rid of those arrows, it's very simple. It's one of two ways. I can come up to Source over here and simply click on Refresh, or I can press Control and the F5 key. For now, since I'm already here, I'll just click over here. The arrows go away. But when I was debugging this program, I noticed that it still wasn't quite working, this procedure, the way I expected it to. When I came into this procedure and I had other values in, in variable A, they weren't equal to 1. For some reason, the rest of this procedure was not executing properly. So let me go to this block over here. And instead of pressing the right click and going through the menu, I'll just come over here, position, as I said, and I'll press now the shortcut, which is shift Control o shift Control o which I'll do right now. And I just did that, and wait a second, what I was expecting to find was the end if for this if over here, right here, but it's clearly showing me that's not the case. So let me scroll down and see what's going on over here. Aha, uh -huh, there's the problem right there. This end if statement is clearly misplaced. It belongs higher up, and that would explain why my procedure's not working the way I expected it to. So... It's helpful, the show block nesting is very helpful in just source code editing and also in debugging because now I can see exactly what's going on with this program. Another interesting thing about show block nesting is let me first let me press control and the F5 key to get rid of them. 
And now I'm going to come out of that control block and simply press Control Shift O again. And when I do that, a couple of things happen. The first thing that happened was you'll notice that it, it shows me every block with their arrows in that entire procedure, which is very helpful. This works not only for procedures, but also for subroutine, which is very helpful. But also, and maybe even more helpful, depending on your code, is that on the bottom left over here now, this came out, this, this enhancement came out in version 9.5.1. It shows me now the name of my procedure or subroutine right on the bottom left over here, which again, if I'm buried deep in the middle of a routine, I don't want to have to keep going up and up to the top of the procedure or subroutine to figure out where I even was. It just it shows me very obvious right there. So very helpful. Show block nesting is, as you can see here, it, it really highlights what's going on. One other thing worth pointing out over here is that it's only capable of, of showing up to six nests. If I go deeper than that, I just get the little blocks there, as you can see. But that's okay. It's still very helpful, and this is a very, again, a very powerful, yet another powerful tool of an intelligent source code editor. So show block nesting, play with it. It's really very helpful. It works great, and I'll see you again. Thanks so much. Bye now.